Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here for a couple of kind of last minute TBRs. I already posted my TBR for All the World's a Page, which is the Shakespeare themed readathon that I'm co-hosting throughout the whole month of July, um, but I definitely am going to be reading books outside of that, and I'm actually going to be participating in Koreadathon and also the Full Metal Alchemist readathon, so I thought I would jump on here and just talk about some things that I hope to read or at least like pick from during the month because of course you know I like to have options. And I'll also be doing kind of a quick currently reading update at the end of this video, um, so let's get into it. For Koreadathon there are five challenges. Those are to read the group book, read a book translated from Korean, read a book with a person on the cover, read a book featuring a diaspora Korean character, and read a book featuring Korean mythology. And I think with the three books that I have picked I think I will be covering all of those except the translation one. Um, I don't think I actually own or currently have out from the library any books that are translated from Korean. There is one that I would like to read, although I don't know if I'll be getting to it this month because again I don't have access Access to it currently, um, but that is The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly, which is written by Sun Mi Huang, illustrated by Nomoko, and the translator is Chi Young Kim. Um, so like I said, I do definitely want to get to that one at some point, but I don't know exactly when that will be. Um, and then here are the books that I am planning to read during the readathon. I don't remember the dates, but I will of course put all the information and the hosts and everything. Um, Monica Kim is the host and creator of this readathon, and I believe I participated last year, and I really enjoyed that. So um, here are the books I hope to get to. The first one is Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu. Maureen Gu writes uh, contemporaries with Korean or Korean-American main characters. I was not the biggest fan of I Believe in a Thing Called Love, um, but I did really enjoy The Way You Make Me Feel and this is I think her most recent release if I'm not mistaken um, and it's one I've been wanting to get to for a while because this is inspired by the movie Roman Holiday um, with Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck and I adore that movie. Um, it's one of my favorite movies and I think a pretty formative movie for me in some ways so I've been really excited to read this for a long time um, and we follow two main characters. The female main character is a girl named Lucky and she's a pop star, a k-pop star specifically um, and one night I think she's on tour or something like that and um, she gets a craving for a hamburger and so she goes out to her hotel lobby and I guess she ends up crossing paths with a boy named Jack um, who is a photographer, like a gossip columnist photographer. And he decides to help her because he knows that he can get a lot of like great candid pictures of her if he helps her. So he has kind of ulterior motives for doing this. And then throughout the course of the night, or maybe it's a whole day, um, they end up getting to know each other and falling in love. And generally I am not the biggest fan of like falling in love in a day type stories, um, but I feel like the other elements of this one, and especially because I'm going in like knowing it's based on Roman Holiday, like I'm more forgiving of that kind of thing in movies and TV shows and things like that. So I'm hoping that I can kind of carry some of that um, into reading this book. And I've heard kind of mixed things about this one. I know some people felt really uncomfortable with the um, the dynamic between the two main characters because the guy is concealing something so big from her. So we'll see how I feel about that. But again, because I'm very familiar with the source material, I'm hoping that um, I'll be somewhat prepared for that. And I do think it'll hopefully be resolved by the end, so we'll see, um, but I'm very excited to get to that one. And then I also have Shadow Song by S.J. Jones. This is the sequel to Winter Song, which I read um, quite a few years ago at this point, at least it feels like a long time, and I really enjoyed that. I know that book got very, very mixed reviews, and there are a couple of things that I think I would be pickier about now or less forgiving of now, but I, overall I do remember really enjoying it and I do want to get to the sequel. Um, this is kind of inspired by Labyrinth and um, there's like this really interesting like fae mythology. Our main character is a girl named Liesel um, and there's also a lot of music in this book or in the series um, and I think I feel like the second book was somewhat polarizing too but I did really like the character dynamic in the first book and the setting and some of the explorations of music and fairy um, fae lore and everything or I guess goblin actually so we'll see how I feel but I am excited to finally have this duology done. Um, and then actually I am going to potentially read the group book, which I never do. I don't like having group books and readathons, but because this is one that I already owned and was already very excited about, um, I am hoping to pick it up. And that is The Silence of Bones by June Her. Um, this is actually a very recent release. I think it was in one of my most recent book hauls. And this is a historical mystery set in the Joseon era of Korea. And I, I'm not always drawn to mysteries, but I think because this is a historical set one, I could really enjoy this. Um, and our main character is a girl who, she ends up um, working with this very young investigator to help him solve the murder of a noblewoman. And the two investigators I think end up becoming very close friends or forming some kind of bond. Um, but then he actually becomes the prime suspect in either that case or another case. And so it's up to our main character to clear his name and to find out what happened. Um, I feel like this has gotten pretty good reviews so far, so I'm very excited about this. And then the last book that I hope to get to for Koreadathon is Korean Children's Favorite Stories. And that is written by Kim so Eun with illustrations by Jung Kyung Sim. Um, and I'm very, very excited about that. I have that out for my library digitally. I have read a few Korean myths or folklore type 
type stories over the years, but it's definitely not one of the group of myths that I'm most familiar with. Um, so I think starting out with kind of a collection of children's stories or like children's favorite stories might be a good way to go. Um, and I think also this is part of a an entire series based around folklore from different Asian cultures. So if I enjoy this one, then I have, I think, others to choose from, which is really exciting. So very excited for that. Also, the illustrations look really cool. And moving into my picks for the Full Metal Readathon, um, I think this is happening through the entire month of July and it is created and hosted by Sarah from Novel Serendipity. Um, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is one of my favorite shows. It is so good. And you can watch it on Netflix, at least in the United States. I don't know what availability is like elsewhere in the world. Um, I think it is just such a fantastic show. And I feel like it's one, like obviously it's a very popular show, very well known, but I feel like there's not a lot of crossover content between Booktube and Full Metal Alchemist, which I think is disappointing and kind of surprising. So I'm really excited that this was happening. I was not originally going to participate, even though I was very excited that this was happening because I was like, I have a lot of things I want to read anyway, but here I am. Anyway, it's fine. Just overambitious TBRs is part of my brand now, and I need to accept that. For this readathon, you choose one of two sets of challenges based on Edward or Alphonse, or the two brothers who are like the main characters in the show. Although I think arguably Edward is more of a main character than Alphonse, but, um, and I ended up going with Edward. Some of them cross over, like are the same between the two of them, um, but some of them are different. And the first one is training. Read a book where the character has to travel elsewhere to achieve their goal. And this is one of the prompts that I am doubling up with. Um, and for that one, I have chosen Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu, because um, Lucky and Jack do end up traveling, like trying to track down, I guess, like the hamburger that she wants. And I think it turns into a like kind of exploring the city. And I believe this is set in Hong Kong, I think. The second challenge is human transmutation. Read a book that's had a cover revamp, which I think is a really cool challenge. Um, and the one that I'm going with is Nomad by RJ Anderson. This is a sequel to Swift, which I reread um, several months ago, actually. And I'm really, really excited because not only are these books getting republished after being out of print for quite a while, um, which is why it counts as a cover redesign, even though this is the original cover, um, but also we're finally getting the third book in the series. I really love the series and I actually want to reread this one because um, I want to do a spoiler-free review on the first two books um, before the re-release of the first one, which I think is in August, so I should probably get on that. Um, but I just really enjoy the series. I loved my reread of book one and if I recall correctly, I enjoy I enjoyed the second book even more, um, so very excited to get to that. The third challenge is certification. Read a book with a competition or test. For that one, I am crossing over with my uh, All the Worlds of Page TBR because I have The Queens of Innis Lear by Tessa Grattan. Um, this is quite a chunky book, so we'll see if this actually happens during the month. Um, but this is a King Lear retelling, and in the original King Lear, um, the whole premise is based on these three sisters whose father is getting old and he's the king of the kingdom where they live. Um, and he has to decide who he's going to name as his heir. And it's not strictly a competition, I think, in the play, if I'm remembering correctly, um, but I'm definitely getting those vibes from this book, so I think that would count. And actually, even in the original King Lear play, I think it would probably count as a competition or test. You know, this is a very slow and character-focused novel, but I feel like I'm gonna really appreciate that, and also the world building, and I'm just really excited to finally get to this. The fourth challenge is Truth, A Time of Starting Over. Start a new series or read a standalone. And for that one, I have chosen the Start a New Series route, and that is A Blade So Black by L.L. L. McKinney. Um, this is a modern fantasy or like contemporary fantasy retelling of Alice in Wonderland featuring a black bisexual main character. Um, and I've recently been hearing really, really good things about this. And I finally own a copy and I'm really looking forward to getting to this. Um, and this is the first book in the Nightmare Verse series. And I was actually going to read this for the Queer Blackathon that happened um, Juneteenth edition, but it, like, it was one of the books I had pulled for that. I just finished the other book I was reading for the readathon, but I just didn't make it to this one. Um, and I definitely still want to read it, so very much excited for this one. The next challenge is The Hot Headed Brat. Read a book with a hot headed character or a character with a temper, because Edward is definitely, <laughs> definitely hot headed. He has real, like, angry short guy energy, and it's kind of hilarious. For that one, I have a book that I, again, was hoping to get to uh, last month, and it just did not happen. I pretty much failed my vault on TBR, um, and that is A Broke Princess by B.R. Myers. Um, judging by the title, I assume that the main character um, is a little bit hot-headed, and I think also the fact that she like runs away from an arranged marriage and she gets into all this trouble and everything, um, I think she's going to be it, like even if she doesn't have like a temper necessarily, I feel like she's going to be kind of hot-headed in the way that she makes decisions, which are not always characters I get along with. So we'll see how I feel about this one. But that is one of the many library books I still have out that I have not finished. Um, it's getting ridiculous at this point. Like our library is open for drop-offs and I need to finish these books. The sixth challenge is Battle with Homunculi. Read a book that has a theme or themes of at least one deadly sin. So that is lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, or pride. And this one, I, it's a little hard to tell what a book's themes are going to be in some cases, um, but I have tentatively chosen The Silence of Bones by June Her, so crossing over again, um, because I think, you know, it's going to be about a crime, and like most crimes, I think it can be traced to 
like one of those things as motives. I think Margaret actually said something similar to why she was picking a certain book. Um, so I'm going to copy her and go with this. And finally, the last challenge is regain what is lost. Pick a book with one or more of the following themes, found self, found item, or found family. And speaking of Margaret from The Word Nerd, um, I'm doing a buddy read with her with this for this book, and that is The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Um, this is actually an ARC edition. I believe this has already come out, um, but it's a retelling of Mary, of Mary from Pride and Prejudice, who is definitely one of the more underappreciated Bennett sisters. And I've heard pretty good things about this overall, um, and I am actually planning a Jane Austen recommendations video, so I definitely want to get some more of those read before I do that. And I think this whole book definitely fits this prompt because it really is going to be about Mary um, finding herself and kind of coming into her own like person and identity, so really um, curious to see how this is done. And then the kind of bonus prompt, I guess, is equivalent exchange. For each volume of Full Metal Alchemist that you read, you can replace one of the above challenges. And I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I think I'm going to be sticking to this, but that is something to know. And before we get into the like currently reading section, I thought I would include a few books that I just hope to get to like during the month in addition to all of the other reading plans I have. Um, generally, I don't do TBRs unless they're like for specific like prompts or readathons or like challenges or something. Um, so this will be a little experiment. Um, but here are some of the things that I'm kind of feeling or like hoping to get to. I only have a few books picked out and again like I've kind of been mood reading more so the fact that I have like kind of a huge stack of choices I think is kind of a good thing. We'll see. Um, and the first one I have here is All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Keeley. I have now read three of Jason Reynolds books and I have loved every single one of them. They've all gotten five stars for me. Um, he's definitely uh, like catapulted himself onto my favorite author list and I have heard just incredible things about this book. Um, this book does deal with police brutality and racial profiling and racism. So I think this is unfortunately yet again a very timely book to read right now um, and it is also I think dual perspective I believe. Um, and it follows two boys. One of those boys is a black boy named Rashad and um, he gets accused of stealing something and police brutally assault him because of this and he ends up in the hospital. And then um, I think Quinn is the white boy who is the other main character and he sees what happens and he doesn't say anything or speak up because he's like, oh, it's not really my place to. And I think the book is realizing, is him realizing that that's not true and that staying neutral is a decision and it is not a decision that helps the people who need it. Um, and I, like I said, I've heard this is just a very powerful, very um, hard-hitting book. And I've also heard that the two main characters, like, they're not... I don't think they really cross paths. Like, I don't think that's what this book is about. I think it's about the very different experiences of two boys in America, because one is black and one is white. And yeah, I am just really looking forward to reading more from Jason Reynolds. I think this is just going to be a really important and well-crafted book. So uh, definitely planning to get to that during the month. Um, and then I also have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This is a West African inspired fantasy novel that I have just heard really, really good things about. I know it was an instant bestseller, which is really exciting. I think it's about two main characters who have reasons for assassinating the other, um, but they end up, but it ends up being kind of a hate to love romance situation. So I'm really excited for that because I love a well done hate to love romance. Also, this is just like one of the prettiest covers I have ever seen. And then the last kind of bonus pick I have is A Cry of Metal and Bone by Elle Penelope. Um, this is an advanced reader copy that I actually won in a Goodreads giveaway um, several months ago. They did this giveaway I think pretty early compared to the release date because I think this comes out in August. Yes. Um, and I definitely want to get this reviewed before then. Um, and this is listed as the third book in the Earthsinger Chronicles, but when I entered the giveaway I looked it up and you can, like you are supposed to be able to read this book separately, so that's why I'm still going in uh, to this one without having read the other two. I believe this book is about um, two countries who are like kind of trying to make peace after centuries of unrest and um, being very against each other and the peace is not going quite as smoothly as everybody had had hoped or planned um, and I think our two main characters end up being involved in that somehow. I think there's going to be a lot of politics in this book and I think there is going to be a romance that is pretty central. I've actually heard um, that this series is more of a fantasy romance than a fantasy with romance in it if that makes sense, um, which I think that's good to know going in and yeah I'm interested to see how this one goes. So those are a ton of books that I hope to get to and I'm very excited about all of these. So now into the currently reading section. This is basically trying to shame me into finishing some of the books that are on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads. Um, it's actually not that many for me. This is only five, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, but the problem is that some of these I have not made progress on in a while. Um, even if I'm really enjoying the books, I'm just like, I don't know, I've been like picking a couple of the books to just focus on and then I finish them and then I pick up something else rather than like trying to finish some of the other books I'm reading in addition to that. And I have found that when I talk about them to other people, it makes me more likely to actually finish them <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time because I get embarrassed about it. So that's what we're hoping to accomplish here. The first one I have is The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is of course the third book in the Lord of the Rings series and um, there is a bookmark in this but it's kind of deceptive because I think I've read like a page maybe? That's embarrassing. <laughs> um, this is a buddy read with my friends Katie, Kelsey, and Fendi and I'm really 
loving the series. Like this is not because I'm not enjoying it that I haven't gotten to it or I haven't like made any significant progress on it. Like I honestly have not even finished chapter one and like I said it's just been a few pages that I've read but it's just something that I feel like I need to focus on and I've been kind of focusing on other books. Um, so this is still going to be kind of a long-term TBR but I do want to actually make progress on this this week so hopefully that is something that will happen. Um, the most recent book that I have started and I'm like consistently making progress on, um, I only started this like a couple days ago and I'm probably going to finish this tonight or tomorrow at the latest and that is I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Um, this is a very short memoir about Austin Channing Brown's um, experience being black in America and especially in work or like nonprofit kind of contexts, like especially in church contexts. Um, it's just so compelling. This is just a fantastic memoir. I first heard about this from Marinas at My Name is Marinas, who is fantastic by the way. Please follow her if you aren't already. Um, but she mentioned this and just talked about how wonderfully done this was and also that this is a good one to kind of start with if you're getting into um, these types of memoirs about uh, being black in the United States. Definitely going to be finishing this soon. I'm actually like pretty close to being done. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it is incredibly well done. The next book I'm reading is a library book and that is Beyond the Black Door by A.M. By a. M. Strickland, excuse me. Hopefully you can see this without me being too shiny. Um, yeah, I just need to continue making progress on these library books that I have. Um, I started this one last month for, I think it was I was supposed to read this for the Olympic Games readathon and it also would have counted for the Queer Lit readathon um, and I just haven't finished it and our main character is asexual which is really exciting to see that because we really don't see a lot of that representation especially in fantasy novels um, and how far am I? I'm like 68 pages in and I am enjoying this so far especially the world building and the setting I find very interesting. Um, the like traveling between dreams is also something that I think is a very interesting concept but yeah not super far into this one yet um, but we'll see. And then I'm also currently reading um, Grey Wolf Island by Tracy Nathercott, which was another one that I started last month and did not finish. Um, I actually only read the prologue and part of the first chapter, I think, or maybe, yeah, <laughs> uh, just the prologue and part of the first chapter. And this is already very different from what I thought, even though I did not know what this was about going in. Um, this is not a spoiler because it happens in the prologue, but we open the book with the main character. Um, her sister is, I think, dying of cancer and after her sister begging her to do this for a long time, we start the book with the main character um, suffocating her sister because that's what her sister has been wanting. And it's just, yeah, it's a very intense way to start a book. So we get done with the prologue and then the rest of the book starts and I just, I don't know, I just don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. So I think the rest of the book is going to be about the main girl, the main character, um, keeping her promise to her sister because before she died um, she made her promise to try and find this treasure that is on Grey Wolf Island and our main character said she would, even though she doesn't really believe in the treasure. So I think that's what the book is going to be about. For whatever reason, I just am not wanting to pick this up at all. Um, like the writing isn't bad, but I just am having a hard time making myself read that one. Um, and then the last one that I'm currently reading is one I started, I think a couple months ago. Um, and that is Fairy Godmother's Inc. by Jennifer Wardell. I'm actually really enjoying this one and I just stopped it because I started reading other things. Um, I'm probably going to continue reading this when I need something a little lighter in between some of the heavier books that I'm reading. Um, so yeah, I mean most of these books on this list, it's not like they're on my currently reading shelf for a long time because I'm not enjoying them. It's just like I keep picking up other things and not finishing the older things I'm reading. So I'm actually really enjoying like the kind of fairy tale tropes that this plays with. I think it's really, um, really enjoyable and really funny and I like the main character a lot. So far so I'm actually like really liking this one and I do hope to make progress on it like I said probably in between some of the other um like heavier books that I'm reading. Okay everybody so those are some uh kind of last minute reading plans because I think both of these readathons have already started or like I think Koreadathon is about to start when I'm filming this and also a currently reading update so let me know if you are participating in any of these readathons or a book that you're hoping to get to during the month of July. Also please be sure to check the description box um I have been continuing to put links for different ways you can support the Black Lives Matter movement um going forward so just be sure to read the description box and check for those um even if the video is not on that topic. Thank you guys so much for watching I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!